99% of people think fitness is solved by weight loss and muscle gain. Imagine if that was not only wrong, but extremely damaging in the long run, leading to decreased quality of life and becoming broken in the end. In fact, the best athletes on earth train completely opposite to what fitness has told you. You see, what good is cardio if your knees cannot run, roll, and vault? What good is muscle if your wrists, shoulders, and core cannot lift your own body off the floor? And what good is strength if your back, hips, and hamstrings are tight as guitar strings and you pop? Today I'll share with you what the problem is, why it exists, and how to fix it so you can have incredible body weight strength and skill for lifelong health and happiness. You see, as good as low body fat and resistance training are, they are absolutely useless if flexibility, mobility, speed, power, coordination, balance, skill, and dexterity are missing. Not to mention the mind, all intrinsic qualities of the human being. And they are missing because of one thing, weak links. You see, this is how most humans operate, created with amazing design, yet not as physically powerful as they were designed to be. We will discuss this list of weak links and how to address each of them. And we all have weak links, including me, but it's how we approach our training that changes everything. Now, not only are people who don't train at all riddled with weak links, making them feel old, worn out, and broken, but those who work out religiously are literally building weak links each and every rep in the gym. Yet it's not entirely your fault. 50% of the blame rests on big fitness. We don't need to go back into the history of bodybuilding and fitness, if history can even be trusted at all. All we need to do is look at the major sectors of the world and ask a simple question. Do they have your best interest at heart? Big education, big pharma and food, big media, big government, and big fitness. With Photoshop, lighting, and illicit substances, many a brand have risen to prominence selling two Two things, weight loss and muscle gain. Not only are weight loss and muscle gain some of the most basic aspects of health to teach, but they are also the most bastardized and the easiest to scan the masses with, especially supplements on top of cheap programs that don't address the real problems. Here's the harsh truth. Sitting in school chairs for 12 years, then in college, then sitting in a job for 20 years, paying a mortgage until you retire. Big Ed, Pharma, Food, Media, Gov, and Big Fitness all driven by NIs or nefarious intentions to keep you stuck in a mindset of lack and in a body riddled with weak links. These nefarious intentions could be money, control, or both, but there's no doubt that despite the accumulation of the most information in the world at the tap of your finger, the world's population is completely riddled with weak links. We've seen thousands of their applications for training, yet by the time we finish our chat together here, there will be another million hours of content uploaded discussing a thousand different diets, an infinite number of obsessive muscle building protocols, and scores of weight reduction optimization ad absurdum. And there will be nearly 1.5 million knee and hip replacements this year, 500,000 shoulder surgeries, and 1.6 million spine surgeries. And that's just in America, not to mention all the physical therapy, high-speed chiropractic manipulation, and millions of cortisone injections. And this isn't even to begin to address the entire scope of health and fitness, so-called. At this point, do you really believe that big fitness has your best interests at heart? Now, let's define what a weak link is so that we can fix it. Cardio and resistance training exist in compartmentalized domains. This reduces workouts to individualized body part training, or IBPT. Shoulders one day, chest another, arms another, back another, legs another. Cardio separated. Unless you're a high level athlete, this is the norm for 99% of the population. Big fitness since the 1960s is directly to blame. Cardio marketed as weight loss thus becomes a mindless, repetitive movement exercise and that done over months, years, and decades directly wears out the specific parts of the body most involved. Think of a serpentine belt on a car that snaps after thousands of miles of use. They may have a great heart, 
out and be somewhat lean, but muscle mass is very low and every joint in their body is ready to explode. And muscle building thus becomes a simple-minded effectuation of hypertrophy to stimulate muscle growth, repetitively putting tremendous stress on particular joints, often in reduced ranges of motion, ignoring connective tissue strength, tightening the joint, and setting the user up for chronic or catastrophic injury. The muscle belly enlarges, but the actual foundation for strength, the joint, is regularly compromised. It is stretched to ranges under load it isn't prepared for, or it is never fully brought to full range and becomes thin, weak, and brittle over time, even though a person has big muscles. And even when cardio and muscle building are combined, it's still failing to take three important elements into consideration. One, muscle growth outpaces connective tissue in transformation. So limited flexibility and greater strength equals injury zone. And two, balance, coordination, speed, dexterity, all connected to neurological function and things a human needs for the real world are severely limited. And three, the mind is stunted from development in that context. So paradoxically, some of the most fit people by appearance move with the most awkwardness, clunkiness, and risk despite their thousands of hours in the gym. It's ironic because everything about fitness is the exact opposite of true fitness. So I just shun the word fitness entirely and focus on mental and physical training. One by one, here are the exact weak links we see. First, the mind. This is the weakest link. Where the mind goes, the body follows, and most people simply follow other people. This is the prime characteristic of sheep. First, I believe people already know the truth, but suppress it to their own demise. This is classic Romans one. Second, I think it's easier for us to allow our emotions to rule our decision making. And so people end up in bad situations like overweight or not as muscular as they could be and reduced in strength and skill while getting angry and blaming others or any number of other covers. Third, I believe these become self-reinforcing cycles that get worse with age but these cycles can be broken and people can truly transform. Now that we've covered the most difficult aspects of this, let's look at the physical body from the head downwards. So second, the neck and shoulders. We've seen so many come in with neck and shoulder immobility. This is the result of desk jockey jobs, too much time on the cell phone, bench press, and repetitive activity sports that require internal rotation of the shoulders. Now this is fixed, by going backwards and building shoulder mobility, bridge, back walkover, and hollow back strength and mobility. Third, elbows and wrists. Too many bicep curls and too much time on the keyboard. People have wrist pain and think they just can't handle the pressure on their wrists for things like L stands and handstands and so on, when in reality, they need more pressure and the opportunity for their body to adapt. Adaptation includes total strength and weight reduction, but not by way of compartmentalized training, but rather simple, real food nutrition, water and holistic training in a variety of contexts, including handstands at all angles. Fourth, spine. Lats are tight from pull downs. Back is compressed from sitting occupations. Deadlift and squat don't mobilize the spine. They just put more stress on the muscles, leading to more constriction. They aren't bad, but they aren't gonna fix it. Tight hamstrings pull the hips into a tilt and compress the lower vertebrae. And then people think they have a strong core because they can do 100 crunches or they can do hanging tucks or weighted ab exercises, but that's pretty low level. And that lack of core strength compromised the back. I personally found this out and discovered true true core strength such as V-stand and front levers, which helped me immensely. I told you, even I had weak links, and where the mind goes, the body follows. Fifth, the hips. If you can't do splits, you haven't trained legs. Flexibility is the foundation for strength. Think of strength like bamboo. You can make weapons or construct buildings out of it. Think of strength without flexibility like a dry, dead tree that is pretty much only good for making a fire. Splits all directions, leg iron cross, W sit, lotus. These are prerequisites to strength. If you start thinking this way, you'll save your health and strength for the long run. Sixth, your knees. I believe your knees are a function of your hip mobility. Inward hips equals inward knees. Outward hips equals outward knees. Full range hips, the more wiggle room your knees have. And the more variety of impact on your knees and all of your joints, the healthier and stronger you become. Then add actual strength, running, rolling, jumping, vaulting. Seventh, ankles. 
exceedingly complex, and a number one area for injury, especially in bodyweight athletics like acrobatics, dance, and martial arts. Ankle mobility is paramount, and the only way to build them is to continually use them and purposely put them into awkward positions. They adapt with use. Before we touch on the last one, it's important to understand that all of this must function holistically, else it's just compartmentalized flexibility and strength once again. Our goal is adequate physical preparedness in any given context, and this requires the aforementioned aspects that will comprise future discussions, such as balance, coordination, dexterity, and more, these missing pieces from big fitness that cause weak links. But fundamental elements in power batics at Pacific Rim Athletics, and quite frankly, all of life. Finally, the fingers and toes, incredibly tight on most people, becoming weak links that simply break at worst case scenario or prevent movement altogether. Don't give up. You can fix your weak links. You're made from the dust of the earth, the same carbon in the ground that can be remodeled into beautiful sculpture. Your body will adapt with work and time, given your mind doesn't hold you back, nor the people you surround yourself with. See you in the next video and in training soon.